He's called like Jesus. Say this with me. I want to be like Jesus. It's God's will for all of us that we will represent Jesus in this earth. For those of you writing down, it's God's will for us to represent Him well. And you know, we are all human beings and we all make mistakes. But thank God that He's a forgiving God. But the Holy Spirit is here this morning and He lives within us. And He's busy changing us. Come on, He's busy changing our hearts. He's busy changing our minds. Many years ago, the Lord spoke to me and said, Son, I make you a mind changer. You see, the Word will always wash your mind. The Word will always change your mind. And so I want you to just open up your heart. Come on, open your mind and say, Holy Spirit, come and teach me. I am teachable. How many of you are teachable? You know, write this down. Teachability is a sign of humility. Come on, show me a teachable person and I will show you a humble person. Don't think because you have this outgoing personality that you are not humble. You know, people think when you are only quiet and, you know, you don't say a lot. And when you talk softly, you know, then you are humble. No, thank God for the variety. Come on, tell your neighbor, I'm so glad that we are different. Come on, tell somebody. Thank God that all our personalities are different. Are you glad about that? It would be a very boring day when all of us would be the same. Thank God for variety. So when you see somebody else that is not like you, say, thank you, God. You made us all different. But now there's one goal this morning. Check how powerful this is. One goal, desire, one prayer this morning. And that is to become like Jesus, all of us. In spite of your personality. In spite of your background. Ah, come on. In spite of your skin color, hallelujah. We are all children of God this morning. And our desire is to be like Jesus. That's it. That's our prayer. This is what this series is all about. To become like Jesus. And it's God's will. It's His will that we will be like Him. Therefore, we are not better than anybody else. No. It's God's will for His people, His church, to represent Him in this earth. Why? So that people can see Jesus in us. Because he said, you are the light of the world. Amen. Come on. You are the salt of the earth. And Jesus is the only answer. It doesn't matter what your question is. Jesus is still the answer. So, if you have your Bible with you this morning, Ephesians. Otherwise, just follow on the board. Ephesians. Chapter 4 from verse 11 says, So Christ Himself, in other words, it's His gifts. The fivefold ministry is really the gifts of Jesus Christ. Now Christ Himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip His people for works of service. So that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature. Say with me, mature. Check this out. Attaining to the whole measure of the fullness. Can you say fullness? Of Christ. So this morning what I'm doing is by the grace and by the anointing and the help of the Holy Spirit, I equip you 
for your ministry and also to become like Jesus. Now, I've spoken to you about humility. Let me just refresh uh, your mind quickly. When we look at Jesus, we see He's God, He's the Son of God, He's the King of glory, He's the jewel of heaven, but He's humble. And the Bible says He was born out of a woman. I mean, He became the Son of Man so that all of us can become sons of God. Isn't that wonderful? It's remarkable. Humility. Say this with me. Humility. And Jesus said we can learn from him. Why? Because he's gentle. Come on. Refresh your mind. And humble in heart. Go and get part one. In part two. I've showed you that we serve a forgiving God. When we look at Jesus. He is a forgiving Jesus. He loves to save and forgive. Come on. He's the great Savior. And it's God's will for us to be like Him when it comes to humility, when it comes to forgiveness. Are you quick to forgive? Or are you still one of those who take offense so easily? Just think about this now. What would have happened if Jesus didn't forgive us quickly. Come on somebody, think with me. What would have happened if Jesus was a person, check this out, that's taking offense quickly? We would have been in trouble. Bless you. But by the grace of God, come on, come on, come on, I want you to get excited. He's a forgiving Jesus. He loves to forgive you. And He forgives you quickly. But come on, many of us, let's say it like that. Then it sounds, not, sounds a bit softer. Many of us don't forgive quickly. Many Christians carry grudges. That's why they become sick. That's why there's no financial blessing. I call it the pig in the heart. It's a filthy thing. Unforgiveness is a faulty thing. Check this out. Unforgiveness will lead to bitterness. Come on, do you enjoy the word? And that will kill you. So we've spoken about that. Go and get the part. Unforgiveness. But Jesus forgives quickly. He's humble. Then last week I've shared on faith. When we look at Jesus, we see this absolute Example of faith. There's no doubt in his heart. He's trusting his father. Come on. When he's praying, it's by faith. I mean, he's raising the dead. He's calming the storm. Come on. Even in the flesh. Yeah, you say, but he was God. Yes, but he was also son of man. And that's why it's the perfect example. The Bible says he was tempted just like we are. See? So go and get all those parts. It's for free. Mahala. Now this morning, let me share with you on prayer. When we look to Jesus, we see a prayerful Jesus. Come on. We see that he's always praying. And we see, that's how I call it. It's a Henry Wilson saying prayer is God's system nothing happens without prayer if you don't pray nothing will happen he loves you come on and you can say but I'm saved by the blood of the lamb amen to that but without prayer there will be no answers to prayer does it make sense the Bible says you don't have because you don't pray. It's God's way of doing things. I don't know about you, but I rather do as He wants me to do. 
Come on, I'll take the word of God every single time over a person's opinion. Opinions will not change the world. Come on, but the word of God will change the world. So Jesus is a praying Jesus and we want to be like him. And so the Holy Spirit spoke to me about this thing, prayer. If we want to become like Jesus, we should be praying as well like him now first of all i want you to understand that prayer comes from a a relationship with him you pray because you want to pray come on you pray because you love him you pray because you want to spend time with him it's not because of uh, a law or because you are legalistic when you love your husband well i suppose you want to talk to him Ladies, you are too quiet. Come on, if you love your wife, I suppose you want to talk to her. Come on, where's all the men? Say amen. amen. If you love your girlfriend, John Ray, you want to talk to her. If you love Jesus, let me tell you, you want to talk to him because you love him. It's all about a relationship. So we allow the Holy Spirit to lead us when it comes to prayer. Come on, let me just help you when it comes to prayer it's all about relationship allow him to guide you every day so in the gospels you can go and read the gospels for yourself that is Matthew Mark Luke and John and you will see many scriptures on and Jesus went out to pray alone And Jesus was alone praying. Hmm? And Jesus stood up early in the morning to pray. Many scriptures. So write this down. Jesus sets the example when it comes to prayer. And if we choose this morning to become like him, we should also choose to pray like him. Hmm? If he as God, now this is a revelation. God, think about this. He's praying. How much more should we, come on, as human beings pray? Hmm? If prayer is God's system, if that is his way of doing things, I want to be part of that because that will lead to great success. That will lead to blessings. I mean, that will lead to breakthrough. Now, Hebrews 5, 7, this is powerful. I want you to underline this in your, in your Bible. Hebrews 5, 7 from the NIV says, And during the days of Jesus, life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries check that out vervent cries in other words sometimes we have loud cries and tears to the one who could save him from death and he was heard because of his reverent submission wow so in the flesh Check this out. As the Son of Man, Jesus was praying and Jesus was calling on the name of His Father and He spent a lot of time in prayer. We cannot talk about becoming like Jesus without talking about prayer. That's who He is. He set the example, the perfect example when it comes to prayer. So let me just help you. There's times when you will only pray gentle. Thank you for this beautiful day, Lord. There's times where I pray like this. Come on, look at me. And I pray time and time and time again like that in my heart. Spend a lot of time praying. There's a good example There was a lady in the Bible by the name of Hannah. And the Bible says there wasn't even a sound coming out of her mouth. And she prayed, Lord, just give me a boy. Come on, 
Do you remember that story? And then God heard her prayers and he gave her Samuel, a mighty prophet of God. This is revelation. This is what God has given to me over the years. Don't try to limit yourself when it comes to prayer by saying you only pray like this or you only pray like this. No. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. But then there's times where we can come with our petitions and we can cry out and pray fervently. Yeah. Woohoo! They that call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. Call on me in the day of your trouble and I will answer you. See? But don't make a law out of it. Allow the Holy Spirit to guide you. Sometimes you pray like this. Sometimes you pray fervently. Amen? Sometimes you pray for a minute. Sometimes you pray for an hour. But the secret is to pray, to spend time with Him. When you love somebody, you want to be with that person. It's all about relationship. If the Lord spoke to you and said, I want you to wake up four o'clock in the morning and to pray for a couple of minutes, you say, yes, sir. Don't make a law out of it. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead you when it comes to your prayer life. It's a good thing to pray in the morning. It's a good thing to pray in the afternoon. I do it every day of my life. It's a good thing to pray in the evening. It's a good thing to pray in the night. The Bible says Daniel prayed three times a day. It's not a law. That's how the Lord, you know, led him to do it. But Jesus was praying. And I think we should all repent this morning. The word repent really means to change your mind. Metanoia. To change your mind. To change the way you think about something. We all need to, to get a new mindset when it comes to prayer. It's all about a living relationship with a living God. You can pray in your car. Just keep your eyes open. Come on, somebody. You can pray in the shower. You can pray in the bath. How many of you like, uh, like me to do some prayer walks? You like to go for a walk and pray. Go for an hour and walk and pray. Yeah, I like it. I love walking in prayer anyway, wherever I am. If you know me, I love to walk and pray in my office, in my study, in my room. I always love walking and praying. Sometimes you can lay down before the Lord. Sometimes you can sit. So I want to give you practical things because people always want to make laws out of things. That's the spirit of religion. They want to limit people and say, you only look like this and you only talk like this. No, nonsense. We are led by the Holy Spirit. Come on, in the New Testament. And He is teaching us to become more like Jesus. If you understand this word this morning, it will change your life. You can pray on the bus. Come on, you can pray at the work. But make sure that you do your work. Because, let me say it as it is, some Christians are lazy. And then they say they do this and they do that, but you get paid to do your work. Now it's very quiet, yeah. But, but you can pray in your heart, and you can do your work. And even if you have a lunchtime, take a, a break, take three or four or five minutes and just praise Him. Come on, just worship Him. Wherever you are, you can pray. But we all should say, sorry, Lord, this morning where we did not pray. And I want to make a statement, and you can write this down. Prayerlessness is not a weakness, but it's sin. The prophet Samuel, come on, I spoke about him just now. That mighty prophet, the Bible says he had a 100%, I mean, record when it comes to prophecy. Everything that he prophesied came to pass. 
He grew up in the church. He grew up in the presence of God since he was a young boy. And you know what he prayed? He said, Lord, forgive us. And please help me that I will never sin against you by not praying for your people. This is what the Bible says. If we don't pray for one another, it's a sin. Why? Because God is praying for us. Think about it. Jesus is praying for us. He sets the example. Nothing happens without prayer. James 4, 2, please. You desire but do not have. So you kill. Hmm? You covet but you cannot get what you want. So you quarrel and fight. You see, that's the flesh. You do not have because you do not ask God. God's way is prayer. How many of you need something this morning? Come on, just be honest. You need a breakthrough. You need a car. How many of you need a job? You need a house. You need something from the Lord. You need a pretty wife. Don't ask you know, just for any wife, be careful. Otherwise, you're going to regret it for the rest of your days. You know, I ask the Lord, please send me a beautiful wife. Because I'm like a Samuel. Like a David in the house of the Lord since I was a young boy. And God sent me my wife. Check this out. To the church where I was busy ministering. In fact, on a Friday night, when we had a youth conference, he sent me my wife because he knew I would not go somewhere else to look for a wife. And I asked him specifically, I want a beautiful, dark, long-haired girl, pretty small and beautiful. And then the Lord spoke to me and said, yeah, she will have tiny feet. Number fives. Sometimes four and a half. I'm telling you the truth. Before that time. Months before that time. And she will fit right underneath you. Many are listening now. We're talking about prayer. I don't have to do this or to do that. The Lord spoke to me and said she will fit exactly under your arm like this. <laughs> don't pray for any guy. You will regret it for the rest of your days. Pastor, you don't know my husband. <laughs> Thank God I don't. See, nothing happens without prayer. And when she was a young girl, listen to this. She wrote a letter to the Lord. And then she wrote about me. And he must make me laugh all the time. You can ask her. She laughs, man. She thinks I'm very funny. <laughs> ask her. We have wonderful times of fun. Okay, so... Be specific. Ask God for that godly husband who will serve the Lord. Come on, with all of his heart. And a guy who has money as well. Be careful. Don't be religious and say, oh, it doesn't matter. What? Are you crazy? Then you come to me for help anyway. And then I must pray for him because he can't look after you. No, girls be very careful. Guys, be very careful. Let me teach you well. Therefore, look after yourself. Therefore, wait until the right time. Therefore, we don't sleep together when we are not married. Because these things are holy. Marriage is holy in the eyes of the Lord. We want to be like Jesus. Come on, now I'm preaching. Holy Spirit, come and teach me to be like Him. And when it comes to prayer, wow, He's a praying Jesus. I want to be like Him. 
I will be led by the Holy Spirit when it comes to pray. I'm so thankful. I said it in the first meeting this morning that God helped me because it's grace. I don't boast in it. I give him always the glory. But since I was a young man, I always loved to pray. Maybe this morning you must say, Holy Spirit, give me that desire also to pray. Hmm? You get people that have desires for many things. But maybe you must ask God for a desire to be, to be a praying person, to spend time in His presence. So you can be specific. Don't say, oh, it doesn't matter, whatever, you know, whatever. <gasps> you will get whatever. You will get what you're praying for. You will get what you're speaking Come on, do you enjoy the word? Yeah. Ask him for a good job, but are you capable of the job? Because mm. many people praying big things, but they're not faithful. Hello, come on, talk to me. They don't want to work, they just want to get money. God will only bless his word. What I'm bringing you this morning, like every other Sunday, Three meetings on a Sunday is only word, not opinions. Word, God's holy word. Because only the word, come on, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit will change hearts. I bring you the bread of life. Be specific. Okay. Now Jesus is praying. In Hebrews 7.25, man, I just love this book, check Hebrews 7, 25 says, Therefore he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. Wow! This is what Jesus is doing. He's the high priest. He's praying all the time right now as God in heaven. And I say, my Lord, you are so amazing. I mean, he's God. He could have said, listen, you pray. I'm God. I don't pray. You pray. But he doesn't do things like that. He sets the example. It's like when you show your children how, how, how it is to serve the Lord. You come to church. You pray. You bring the Lord's tithe. You show them. Monkey see, monkey do. But when you tell your children, do this, but you don't do it, it won't work. So you see, Jesus is the perfect example when it comes to prayer. And he's interceding for us right now, Uncle John. Right now. He's at the right hand side of the Father. He's praying for his church. This is amazing. It's actually mind-boggling. It's, it's like many times I would say, Lord, this is really too big for our minds. God is praying because that's his system. When you pray, you receive any. Without prayer, nothing happens. That's why for many, many years in this beautiful church, I've said, not everybody can preach, but everybody can pray. And I know that there's many people that they've, they, don't, they don't pray because they don't allow the Holy Spirit to teach them, but you can pray because you can speak. That's what I'm saying. You have breath. Come on, do this. Let me see if you're still alive here. If you have breath, you can pray. You can say, Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. And then you can talk to him. Many people say they can't pray, but they can talk a lot of nonsense. They talk. If you can talk to people, do you think you can talk to God? Okay, I just see this in the Spirit. For some of you who find it difficult to pray, start like this. Go and get, get a nice chair. And sit down and say, Lord, I just want to talk to you today. Like you would have talked to somebody else when they visit with you in your house. You can, you can actually do the following. Um, many people would say, man, this is too radical. No, it's not too radical. It's just practical advice. Go, go and sit nearby another chair. 
and say, Lord, please just come sit down here and just spend time with me. And then you talk to him out of your heart as you would talk to your friend, your wife, or your husband. And you learn to speak from your heart. You see? It was never God's will to become religious. And there's so many, so many things that came in, you know. People change their voices when they pray. And, all, all. and Jesus said, don't be like the Pharisees. Because they love to be heard by others. No, learn to, to, to just talk from your heart. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Thank you for this new day. Thank you, Father, for blessing us with, with another day. Thank you for my family. Thank you, Jesus, that you've paid the price for me. Just talk from your heart. And then there will come times where you will intercede for people, where you will pray and bring your petitions before the Lord and say, Father, please, in Jesus' name, and you pray fervently. But other times you will just worship Him. Other times you will just be grateful. Let me teach you something powerful. A part of my prayer life in a day has a lot to do with to be grateful. God loves a grateful heart. Any good father and mother loves it when their children are grateful. Remember that. So Jesus is interceding for us. And I say, Lord, please stop. Please never stop praying for us. <laughs> Thank you for praying for us. This is absolutely remarkable. Romans 8.34 Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died. More than that, who was raised to life and is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. That is what Jesus does right now. He's interceding as the high priest. Now think about it. God is praying. Jesus is praying. The Holy Spirit is praying. How much more should we as human beings pray? Not only because we need Him. Yes, we do. But because we love Him. We just want to spend time with Him. And sometimes you don't even have to talk too much. Just spend time in His presence. Man, the anointing on me to teach is here now. Just lift your hands and say, I just love to be with you. Sometimes when you know a person very well, like I know my wife and she knows me for many, many years, sometimes you don't have to say anything because you're comfortable with, with who they are. When you're not comfortable with people, you feel you have to say anything and what is he thinking? What is she thinking? Or you want to impress people. But when you know somebody, when you're in a loving relationship, you don't try to impress anybody anymore. You know the person. When you spend time with God alone and a lot, there's times where you just worship Him. There's times when you just talk out of your... He loves it. He's waiting for that. There's times where I'm just waiting on Him where, where I don't say anything. I just want to hear what He says. Come on, do you enjoy the Word? Do you learn something? Let's become like Jesus. He's praying. How much more should we pray? And the Bible says that we should pray for one another. Carry one, one another's burdens and fulfilling the law of Christ. That law is only to love people. That's the, that's the law of the New Testament is to love your neighbor like you love yourself. Now many people don't even like themselves or love themselves. How in the world can they love other people? That's why he said first and foremost, love yourself. You can't, you can't make any difference. When you always feel rejected. How can you love people if you don't even love yourself? For those of us who have children. When your child says things like, Nobody loves me. I'm not important. Things like, maybe she says, 
I'm not pretty, it will hurt you because it's your child. You don't want your child to say things like that because she's the most beautiful little thing to you. Get this revelation. When you come with inferiority all the time and, and you talk negative things about yourself, it hurts your Father in heaven. Because the greatest price is paid for you. The blood of Jesus was shed for you. Never talk down to yourself. Never talk down to nobody else. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Holy Spirit, please help us this morning to become like Jesus. Help us to pray like Jesus. Thank you that we can have this wonderful relationship with you. Thank you for teaching us how to become mighty prayer warriors. I pray that this word will bring great change. And that lots and lots of fruit will come because of this teaching. Thank you, Jesus, that you are praying for us. Thank you for interceding for us. Help us now to pray for one another, to pray for the assembly, to pray for our spiritual family on a daily basis. Because we want to do exactly like you do. We want to speak like you speak. We want to pray like you pray. I bless your people. We thank you for this wonderful morning. In Jesus' mighty name. And can you say, say Amen. amen.